Hi everyone, welcome to Smart Class. Today's topic is Quantitative Techniques and Operations Research. The agenda for today's class is Introduction and Different Phases of OR, Scope, Applications and Uses and Limitations of OR. Starting with the introduction of operational research, what is operational research? We can describe OR or operation research as a systematic approach to solving problems which uses one or more analytical tools in the process of analysis. It also uses variety of mathematical techniques for problem solving and to obtain an optimum solution. It is the organized application of modern science, mathematics and computer techniques in various fields. The purpose is to provide explicit quantitative understanding and assessment of complex situations for activity at best distance. First definition is, OR is the scientific method of providing executive with an analytical and objective basis for decision making. Coming to the second definition, OR is a systematic method oriented study of the basic structures, characteristics, functions, relationships of an organization to provide the executive with a scientific and quantitative basis for the decision making. We have done with the introduction and definitions of OR. We are moving ahead with phases of OR. The following are the different phases involved in the study of OR. The first phase is formulating the problem. Here, more than the general problems such as increasing the productivity and dealing the problem with the quality, we also have to be very clear with what is the specific problem that is involved with that. So in this phase, we have three components to be uh, paid attention. That is the first component, statement of unambiguous objective. It is important to define the scope of objective along with the specification in order to establish limits for the analysis to be carried out. Though the entire system level solution is desirable, it is not always possible, may be unrealistic at time. So we have to focus on particular portion or level of system by isolating it and analyzing it completely. This is effective even with large and complex systems. Example to minimize total production cost at moving ahead with the second component specification of factors that will affect the objective. Here we discuss about the alternative courses of action that can be controlled by a decision maker and the uncontrollable factors which are not under the control of the decision maker. Example in a production environment the plant production rates can be controlled but the actual market demand may be unpredictable the idea here is to form a comprehensive list of all alternative actions that can be taken by decision maker and that will then have an effective on the stated object let's take an example for a third component in a production environment the availability of resources may set a limit to the production and what level the production can be achieved so for this a better idea could be to take down what is the availability and what is the requirements and cut down our objective accordingly which may result in more optimality so now we have covered the first phase of OVA that is nothing but formulating the problem. We also discuss the different components involved with the formulating problem. Moving ahead with the second phase of OR that is construction of models. So why we need models are basically built for the better understanding of the problem and which in turn helps us to analyze the problem in a much more easier way. So what is models? Models are nothing but they are the selective abstraction of the reality where we take a particular uh, topic or a concerned uh, part of the problem. Here I am only mentioning the different types of model. I am not going to discuss in detail since that will take very long time. Let's move ahead with the third phase of OR that is deriving the solution from the model. In the first phase we have formulated the problem and we have a clear understanding what is the problem here. And in the second phase based on the problem we come up with the model for the better analysis of the problem. So in the third phase with the model which you have developed we are going to derive the solution for the problem. Here there are two types of techniques which have been used. One is simulation technique and one more is optimum seeking techniques. So, uh, simulation techniques are nothing but which are carried out on simulation models. So that are nothing but the computer programs which have been run for different various values and various scenarios and to get the best results out of it. And optimum seeking techniques are basically carried out on the mathematical models uh, and different mathematical techniques have been used to get the optimum results out of them. 
again here in this optimum seeking technique i'm just giving you the brief idea basic idea there's much more to be discussed on optimum seeking techniques much more uh, terminologies has to be under now we have arrived to the next phase that is testing the model and its solution that is nothing but updating the model it's very important to test whether our model and the solution derived from the model is meeting with the requirements and it is solution to the problem which we have derived so it is important to check it and to correct it if in case it is not meeting the requirements the last and final step in the or process is to implement the final recommendation and establish control over it uh, implementation here means there a set of people who work on bringing up the manuals or the guides which are involved for the particular model and so this team basically come up with the different manuals and timetable for putting the plan into effect so later once this implementing is done it's very important to monitor the system and to check how this implementation or all these planning is coming to force monitoring plays a very important role here in phases of or moving ahead with scope of or let's see where all we can use or in an organization there may be a possibility that technicians administrators statisticians and economists may work together to solve a particular problem using or the different fields where or has been useful are agriculture finance research and development marketing personal management and production management these are few fields only there are so many other fields where or is still useful let's go ahead with the applications of or here are a few applications scheduling airlines including both planes and crew deciding the appropriate place to site new facilities such as warehouse factory or fire station managing the flow of water from reservoirs identifying the possible future development paths for parts of the telecommunication industry establishing the information needs and appropriate system to supply them within the health service identifying and understanding the strategies adopted by companies for their information system the uses and limitations of or uses it provides a logical and systematic approach to a problem it allows modification of mathematical solution before it is in use net course of action for the same management facilitates improved quality of decision leads to optimum use of managers production factors indicates the scope as well as the limitation of a problem let's see what are the limitations involved with or or requires huge calculation which cannot be handled manually require computer and resulting in heavy cost at times the implementation of or mainly depends on the person who provides the solution and the person who uses the solution models are only idealized representation of reality and cannot be re regarded as absolute in any case so this completes the video regarding the basics of or hope it provided you with some basic idea of operation research please let me know any suggestion in the comment bar uh, please share the video if you like it thank you